The South American country of Colombia is just weeks away from elections. The right-wing president is expected to lose, and for the first time in modern history, a left-wing politician is expected to win. The country is also involved in a dispute with its neighbour Venezuela and is still battling its reputation as a major producer of cocaine. Its vice president, Marta Lucia Ramirez, has been in Turkey building relations. I'm Andrew Hopkins and I've been speaking to her one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, Marta Lucia Ramirez, vice president and minister of foreign affairs for Colombia, thank you very much for talking to TRT World. First of all, I wanted to ask you about Venezuela because you don't have diplomatic ties with Caracas at the moment. You've recognised uh, Juan Guaido as the president there, not Nicolas Maduro. But now we have the United States, your biggest trade partner, it seems to be developing relations with the, the government there. How do you feel about this situation at the moment? First of all, Andrew, let me thank you for giving me this opportunity to share with your audience about Colombia, the Colombian situation, the current situation, and of course about the common challenges that we are facing. All the nations in the entire world, we are uh, having these uh, challenges because of COVID, because of the uh, war from Russia against Ukraine, because uncertainty that everybody is having nowadays. So uh, in the relation between Colombia and Venezuela, let me say that we have this brotherhood relation because we came from the same father. Bolivar gave us independence 200 years ago, and we were one nation. Now we are divided, but we are still very similar, very alike. We still have this very friendship relation between our two countries, between our two nations. So uh, nowadays, uh, unfortunately, we have no a diplomatic relation, but let me say, this relation was cut by Nicolás Maduro. It was not cut by the Colombian government. And Nicolás Maduro cut the relation during the Colombian previous government. It was not with Iván Duque's government. It was during Juan Manuel Santos' government. Why? Because on that time, year 2018, uh, he made a kind of a simulacro of a election uh, because he, uh, took out, he put apart the opposition. So he won an election that was him against him. It was something like this. And that's why so many countries in the world community rejected that election. Colombia, one of them. And he cut the diplomatic ties on that moment. He expulsed all the Colombian diplomats from Venezuela uh, in year 2018. We arrived to government in year 2000, at the end of 2018, and we uh, reached uh, that this relation uh, doesn't exist, the diplomatic relation. During these uh, three years and a half, of course, uh, everything has been more difficult. Why? Because in year 2019, uh, the uh, Venezuelan constitution says that if uh, they don't have a president that was elected by the people of Venezuela, the president who have the power is the president of the National Venezuelan Assembly. This is what the Constitution says in Venezuela. And that's why not only Colombia, many nations in the entire world recognize Juan Guaidó. It's because the Constitution of Venezuela says that he is, uh, that he is the person in charge in order to have a call for a new elections and in order to uh, con have a continuity in the Venezuelan democracy. And uh, now, uh, as you said, we know that the United States have some uh, communications with the uh, Maduro regime. It's because they have some people, from some Americans who were kidnapped in Venezuela. And we understand that this is a legitimate a decision from a government to ask other who has the de facto power to help them to have these Americans that go back uh, to their home. President Biden said to President Duque three weeks ago when we visited him that they are not recognizing Maduro, that they were asking for people who were kidnapped in Venezuela. And we believe that this is the truth. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if 
Biden or whatever wants to recognize, we still believe that Venezuela deserves to have a democratic government, deserves to have a democratic election, and we will insist that this is something that the international community have to ask for democracy, for the freedom, because we are seeing the results. Now we have more than 6 million Venezuelans abroad. This is worse than the Syrian crisis. So when you have this evidence, when you have all this information about violation of human rights in Venezuela, all this narco-trafficking, the poverty that we are seeing in Venezuela, it's something that we have to uh, insist the international community must uh, support the transit uh, to a democracy in Venezuela again. Um, but what I understand as well is the talks between the Biden administration and Venezuela are also about potentially about oil because it's now refusing to buy Russian oil because of what's happening in Ukraine. Um, the, I spoke to the Venezuelan foreign minister at the Antali diplomatic forum a few weeks ago and he said that uh, they're willing to talk to the US about these issues if they recognize the Maduro government as the legitimate government of Venezuela. So if this happens, would this put pressure on your government to recognize uh, the Maduro government? And what would it take for diplomatic ties to be restored? Let me say that we have a very close, very close relation with the United States. And we trust in the United States institutions. And we have this bipartisan par uh, relation with them. We have a very good relation with Democrats, also with Republicans. But at the end of the day, if uh, the uh, American government uh, decides to recognize a, a, like a legitimate government, uh, somebody who has no legitimacy, we have to reject, we have to say we don't agree, we disagree, and we will maintain our position because we have a close relation with the United States, but we have autonomy. Because this is what a, 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 a independent nation means. We have to have our own autonomy as a government, as a state, and also as a society. I was listening to your press conference with the Turkish foreign minister, and you were talking about uh, the refugee issue. Obviously, there's several million refugees in Turkey, and there's uh, I think two, two and a half million refugees in your country and you obviously talked about Ukraine and there was something said about uh, cooperation on this issue in future. Now, what have you got planned in this area? Because these two countries are a long way apart geographically, so how can you cooperate and what do you want to do? Uh, we are so far, uh, one uh, to the other, geographically, as you said, but we have the same situation. We have in our borders, countries which are expulsing or have exposed some of their citizens. We have had all this solidarity from international communities saying, good, that's something that you are doing well, assuming these people. But now with the Ukraine crisis, maybe it's going to be new flows of migrants. And what we think that we can work together is to make a call for all the nations to have a conviction to have a sincere decision to help migrants to be part of the societies where they arrived. It's not easy because, for example, in Colombia, we are not a rich country. We assume two point, uh, we, 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 we made a temporary status for Venezuelans, for two million Venezuelans. But the reality is that we have 2.5 million of Venezuelans uh, in Colombia. And uh, many people in the international community say, okay, we are going to support you, we are going to cooperate you, and we are going to give you enough money. It's not true. The money that we have received is less than 25% of the real cost that we have to assume these 2.5 million people in our country. I don't know the exact numbers for uh, Turkey, but I know that you have like 5 million people also. So now when you see that maybe could have these, uh, all these uh, migrants from Ukraine, we have to think how we can be more solidar, how we can uh, give these people what they deserve to have in order to stabilize themselves, their families to have a new life. Uh, but it means that uh, it needs a, a realistic, but also a genuine approach 
for uh, the developed uh, countries because uh, uh, Turkey assumed the Syrians, Colombia assumed the Venezuelans. Who is going to assume the migrants from uh, Ukraine? I think that we all have to take a decision, okay, we are going to assume X percent, X number, whatever it is, and we are going to work in order to provide them a dignity for their lives. So how do you make that different this time? Because as you said, there's been lots of different appeals by the UN, other organizations, uh, how you give aid to these people, how you give them shelter, and not always do countries, organizations live up to their commitments. So what would you do different this time if you're working together with Turkey, for instance? You know, uh, for us, uh, the, the Turkey experience has been uh, very positive and we are learning a lot from the Turkish experience. You have more time than uh, us uh, assuming these uh, migrants. And what is clear is that so many of them are part, part of your labor force. They are having their own activities here in Turkey. We in Colombia, we still have so many people who arrive. They are uh, with them. Um, uh, the United Nations um, um, organizations, whatever, but they are not uh, enough incorporated to the Colombian society. So for us, it's clear that we have to create jobs, of course. We have to uh, promote more entrepreneurship in order to permit them to become uh, real entrepreneurs, not for a short time, but also for the long time in order to, to, to assume their lives with dignity, which is the most important uh, goal that we have. President Duque in Colombia, he uh, proposed this very generous uh, response from Colombia to Venezuelans. We are going to uh, give them 10 years in order to take a decision. If they want to uh, become the Colombian citizens, that's fine. If they want to go back to Venezuela, that's fine. But at least during 10 years, we are trying to provide them schools for the children, you are trying to provide them jobs opportunities. But now Colombia has, a, unfortunately, we have a very a high a unemployment rate. It's because of COVID, it's because of this inflation, it's because of many different reasons. So we still have a double digit unemployment rate. So we have the challenge to provide jobs for Colombians, but also jobs for Venezuelans. And that's uh, something that, that it's difficult, but we are working on it. OK, Vice President, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for your interest in, in Colombia and, of course, in Latin America.